All right. I have delayed long enough. It has been a topsy-turvy start to the NBA season so far. In fact, there's a game going on right now between the Magic and the Mavs, but the Mavs are currently beating the brakes off of the Magic, so, you know, it is what it is. You know, speaking of the Magic, you know, Paolo Bancaro has just been on a tear. I mean, he had a 50-point game, you know, the other night. Even though, you know, guys continue to get hurt, you know, each and every night in the NBA. So, I mean, you know, the, the, the season so far to start out has been kind of weird. You have the Cavs unbeaten, led by Donovan Mitchell, with a absolutely stunning final play to beat the Bucks, who I'll talk about in a moment. You know, SGA and the Oklahoma City Thunder are also unbeaten. The Boston Celtics have three-pointed their way to record-breaking stats. And just, again, the talent on that Boston Celtics roster, like I told y'all, has just been on a different it's been different. It's been a different, you know, Boston Celtics team, you know, with keep in mind, Kristaps Porzingis isn't even playing at the moment. You have guys like Peyton Pritchard stepping up, <laughs> which is insane to me. You have guys like Luke Cornett, you know, out here making plays that are needed. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, the Warriors, Despite the fact that they're going with like a 12 man rotation, Steph Curry getting hurt, you know. I mean, it's just like the Warriors are five and one right now. Again, it's still very early. Again, most teams have played like five to seven games so far. So it's still very, very early in the season. So a lot of narratives are being, you know, thrown into the window already because, again, we're so early into the season and so many things are happening already you know the bucks are confusing me because you know Giannis and company are like one in five which makes absolutely no sense with the way Giannis has been playing but again the rest of the bucks have to step up and nobody is stepping up you have Tori and Prince playing 30 minutes a night it just doesn't make any sense to me it just doesn't make any sense right Right. And and Davian Lillard, you know, has on and off nights. And so, I mean, he's untrustworthy. The 76ers, I just don't understand. You know, I get it. Joel Embiid, you know, kind of, you know, can't play consistently at this point. I mean, it's not so much a complaint as it is, you know, it's just reality. But, again, the guy should be trying to get back on the court, you know. It really doesn't matter. We, you know, I get it. There's all sorts of things going on with him, him beefing with reporters, you know, because, you know, they're talking about his kid and stuff like that. And, I mean, it, it, it that that's crazy. That's crazy and stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Nothing. We can't do nothing about it. It's up to Joel to get back on the court in a timely and efficient manner. So, I just want to briefly get the NBA out of the way because, again, there's not too many games tonight, so I needed to get it out of the way before too long. I wanted to get this up earlier, but, you know, things happen. You know, things happen in the NFL today. I don't want to talk about it right now. But, yeah, college basketball. Oh, boy. Today is going to be a new day. You know, today is going to be a new day. Tomorrow night, we have a big, big game between Baylor and Gonzaga, Gonzaga, and the rest of the Mountain West, you know, because of conference realignment, really trying to give it one last big go at it before, you know, I get it, they have two years left, but really, this is the last big go before things start to go a little bit crazy, like Grand Canyon joining the Mountain West. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's just wild to see. But the big story, a lot of people are talking about Cooper Flag. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, like ESPN, you know, headlines have like about 30 different articles about Cooper Flag already, which is going to be crazy. North Carolina and Duke, you know, are probably going to have another really, you know, at least two games this year. I guarantee you that. But yeah, the hype is here 
for the Duke Blue Devils. What about what what what, 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 what about some of the other teams? What about UConn, who's trying to three peat it? Trying to three peat it? What about Gonzaga? You know, Ryan Nimhart is still here. You know, Gonzaga's got a pretty interesting core back. You have John Calipari at Arkansas, <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense. Texas is in the SEC, which Ramon Mark, you know, leading the way. I mean, Houston still looking like a juggernaut of the Kelvin Sampson. And again, the Big 12 is going to be an absolute juggernaut. Hunter Dickinson, Kansas, I mean, Arizona. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just gonna be wild. You know, there's like eight different Big 12 teams in the top 25 so far, and like five of them are in the top 10, top 15. It makes no sense. It makes no it makes absolutely no sense, but hey. The beauty of college basketball is that this is on this is completely unpredictable stuff, very much unpredictable stuff. You know, um, again, the SEC might be even stronger this year. You know, I think in my personal opinion, now, now you have Arkansas with Calipari, you know, looking pretty interesting. Alabama, I haven't even said anything about Alabama yet. Oh my goodness, boy, boy, Auburn. As well, I mean, the SEC is gonna cook this year, and you know, even though you know, I'm a little bit mad at some of these TV schedules coming out. You know, like there's only one game, you know, from the SEC men's side on ABC. You know, just 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 one, no more than that. And I get it because of hockey and NBA commitments, but yeah, I would like a little bit more on there, you know, but it's fine, it's fine. You know, I'm not gonna complain about TV too much, you know, this year. Um, this, this, this team, this, the, these sets of teams, I think we're going to get into, I think we're going to get into something that just, you know, is this year is just not going to make any sense. I guarantee you that. And trying to figure out a final four, because I want to see, you know, what my men's final four is looking like. And I got to tell you, I don't even know to be quite honest with you, but what I'm going to say is, is that we are going to get something kind of like this. And forgive me if I'm completely wrong, because my predictions are known to be wrong. So here's my men's final four for this year. So just, just to be just to be completely transparent, this is just off the rip. This is just off the jump. I have not looked at everybody's rosters and stuff like that yet. I have looked and, you know, kind of, you know, looked at some of teams' rosters. I haven't looked at everybody's rosters. So that's my Final Four prediction this year, and you're probably wondering, well, what about my what about my champion? What about the men's national champion? You know, what about my national champion? I think, I think we are not getting – I think we are heading towards – the same thing that we're heading towards in the NFL, just to be completely real with you. I think we're heading towards the same thing in, in the NFL as we are in college basketball. We're heading towards a 3 P with UConn. That's what I personally think. Women's side, loaded. You have games in France tomorrow. You have games all this week. And again, the women's side of college basketball likes to test themselves a lot more than the men's side does. In fact, there's like so many big matchups to start the week off. Uh, South Carolina, even though, you know, they, they have, they have so much, you know, coming back and everything like that. You know, they have so many, you know, gals gone and stuff like that. They're just loaded, loaded, loaded group. How are teams like Tennessee going to fair? How are teams like Stanford Iowa without Caitlin Clark, without their former head coach, a lot of a lot of those programs aren't looking the same as they were last year. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish are getting back together. They're getting themselves back together after, you know, Hannah Hidalgo and company. You know, they're 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 getting themselves back together. You know, because a lot of those a lot of those ladies were injured last year. UConn, Paige Beckers, so many injuries last year to UConn, so many. Texas is looking interesting now in the SEC. You have, again, you have Louisville interesting. NC State going to have a big-time match with South Carolina next Sunday. I mean, it's just it's just going to be insane. Duke is going to be interesting. Maryland as well. Just so many different things going on, you know, 
And I think we are not going to get a repeat champion here. I'm wondering, you know, if South Carolina can repeat, I think they'll, they'll be the favorites. They'll definitely be the favorites to repeat. But I just don't think we're going to get that in women's basketball. I think because the parity is a little bit more intriguing here, and a lot of the top teams, you know, kind of face each other. But I still think we're going to get South Carolina in the Final Four. But I also think we're going to get UConn here. And, well, what about those West Coast gals? Lauren Betts, Juju Watkins. Yeah. Oh, boy. The Big Ten is going to be fun with those two. You know, a couple, couple that with Maryland and a couple other teams. You know, it's going to be intriguing. Let me tell you. It's going to be very intriguing. But I think my women's Final Four is going to look kind of like this, just to be completely honest with you. If you, if I'm wrong, I'm going to be wrong. But I think we're getting this. UConn and USC again will face off in December. South Carolina and Notre Dame is going to be a matchup. I think that happens. You know, at some point, South Carolina UConn is a matchup that's going to happen at some point early in the, like February. You know, this is what my final four is looking like. Well, what about my women's champion? Well, I think this will be the year that we get another UConn championship. But I'm probably wrong, you know, just, just to be completely real with you. I think I'm probably wrong. You know, you have other teams on the men's side like Purdue trying to figure themselves out without Zach Eady. You know, now he's at Memphis, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, yeah, so there's kind of how I'm feeling about some things i Probably gonna get some things wrong. Let's just be real. Uh, um, I'll come back to y'all on feast week. You know, before feast week, there's gonna be some interesting matchups before, like a couple days before feast week really begins. So, you know, we'll kind of come back and you know, kind of talk then. We'll see if the NBA, you know, has some interesting things to offer between now and then. And the same thing with college basketball again, big time matchups all this week. You have uh, what do we have? What do we have? And what else do we have? I know there were some others that I was intrigued by. I think North Carolina, Kansas is going to be one of those. Like I said, North Carolina um, is well, maybe that's next week. I think that may be next week. No, actually, it is this week. So North Carolina taking on the number one preseason number one Kansas, South Carolina preseason number one on the women's side. So, boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm probably going to be very much wrong on that on our Final Four prediction. Just on both sides, let's just be real. But but I'm going to go with it because these are just off the jump right now. I'll make like some mid-season predictions if I can. I'll probably do that maybe like January, something like that. Make some mid-season predictions as far as, you know, what my Final Fours are looking like. So these are just preliminary. Um, yeah, so... I'll talk to you all again on Tuesday night to you know talk college football, you know, the elections also Tuesday night. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna get on about here. So get on about here and talk to y'all later. <laughs>